Uh, Senate President Craig Blair is our guest here via telephone live from the interims in Parkersburg, as I understand it. Craig, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Have you tried to bribe Rob, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Was easy. To, that doesn't fit into my vocabulary. I don't bribe anybody. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting opening question there. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, that is up there. Uh, by the way, the Admiral was uh, appraising your work there off, uh, off air, you know, heading into the break here. Bill, what's happening there? Yeah, man? your son's coming over to redo some work you did 20, 25 years for me, Craig, uh, for a water softener system that holds together for 20, 25 years uh, is pretty admirable. So, yes, I was praising your work. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, th th that's always been my goal is to have them so they lasted a long time and did their job and they were cost-effective to repair when they needed to be. So, yeah, thanks, and it, Bill. Thanks for the advertisement. Well, yeah, and uh, and it was not the workmanship that died; it was the uh, the equipment itself. And that's uh, they generally have what about ten to twelve years, and we got we got the monies out of it. So. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it makes me feel really old, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was intent, Craig. <laughs> Well, if that's what makes you feel old, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to get out of a chair is enough to make me feel that way. Goodness. Yeah, that's one of the things that makes me feel old. <laughs> hey, let, let's uh, before you go. Yeah. How how long has it been, Craig, since you've climbed under a house? Uh, you know, I can't answer that question. <laughs> it was probably within the year. Like, oh, has year. it been? I thought I thought you'd given that up several years or so ago. No, that, no that, that, that means that that, uh, that I don't own the company any longer, uh, but I still help every now and then. To, and but I, I'm telling you, it's it's not easy to get under the house like it used to be. <laughs> You're I'm, telling me, uh, yeah. yeah, and doing it for every day helps you stay limber and being able to. <laughs> when, but my my poor knees, you get in those crawl spaces, uh. -uh. That, that hurts. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. I, plus, I, who knows what you find under those crawl spaces, yeah. man? Uh, oh, I don't worry about that at all. When it's the snakes and the stuff like that, they run the other direction when you go rolling into there. So I've never been concerned about that. Yeah, but, that's all you do that job, not me. Yeah. But one of the things, a lesson you sh gave to me years or so ago, there's a lot of dust under the house. And you come out and just the naval uh, system's all clogged up. Craig says, have a Coca-Cola, it clears it out. And that has been a lesson I've learned. I've followed it for the last several years. When I get a lot of dust, I head for Coca-Cola. It works? It works. It does, yep. Does yep. a beer do the same thing? I don't know about a beer. Okay. <laughs> They're both carbonated. It's, it's the caffeine. Yeah. Oh. oh, then you could have coffee. But not Folgers. Yeah. Hey, uh, let's talk. Or who's that sign guy? Let's talk about uh, what you're doing in Parkersburg first, Craig, with uh, the gathering there. What's the chief purpose of this? Well, the, the, the chief purpose is, is that we try to get our uh, – the in, everybody gravitates to Charleston for meetings and such like that. But what you need to do is get out and see different areas of the state and build the camaraderie and understanding of what each – because we've got probably six di distinct areas of the state, uh, so we're not uniform in any way, and people need to get out and see and learn – what all's in the area. So this time we're in Wood County, Bunner Hassett, Bunner Hassett Island, uh, that we're going to be visiting of uh, several different plants. I was out there at airport yesterday. Um, and then Omnis is a power plant that is about 20 minutes away from here. So I say Omnis, it's the Pleasance Power Plant. The Pleasance Power Plant. Right. Did I answer the question you wanted to answer? I think so. Yes, sir. And we have interim meetings as well, so that you know, like judiciary meets, finance meets, and uh, but we try to make it so that we don't have a lot of the state agencies coming to these meetings. That let's just leave them keep working, and when we're in town the next month, then we bring that up. And what is the purpose of going to different places around the state? Oh, well, I thought I just explained that. Uh, and it's to build our awareness and understand the, uh, the uniquenesses of different areas. When we bring lots of times, when, to, for instance, when we did uh, the Eastern Panhandle here, I think it was last year. Yes. Uh, there, there have been people 
in West Virginia that had never been to the Eastern Panhandle, never been there. And so that applies throughout the state uh, that, that you, you need to be able to get them to where they can see the different differences that we have in this state. And it, it, it builds camaraderie. So when you were in the Eastern Panhandle last year, did it make the point clear that the cost of living is different here, that Route 9 through Hedgesville is a disaster and needs addressed here? Did those sorts of things become more clear to those who don't live anywhere near here? Yes. Now, it doesn't mean that they'll change their votes uh, for it, but it helps them have a better understanding. If you really want to get them to have an understanding, what you do is have them move here to the Eastern <laughs> Panhandle for a year. Hmm. And uh, we get to pay the taxes and the cost of housing and the cost of living, and they, they have a better understanding. I know where you're going with this question, of uh, and of uh, that, but that's a good reason to have them out. And it helps uh, get that understanding. So if you wanted to do a regional pay, that you could. Mm -hmm. Is it that came within eight votes of at least being studied last year, Craig. Do you like the momentum and the direction in which that is moving, or do you think that's as good as it gets? Uh, it's as good as it gets until. Did the, and I've said this over and over and over, because I've been in favor of regional pay, locality pay, whatever you want to call it, since I first ran for office, and that was over 20 years ago. The only way that you're going to get it is to have more growth areas in the state of West Virginia. So that, that whenever I became the Senate president, that this is what the laser beam focus has been, is to create more growth areas in the state. You can see north central West Virginia growing. The northern panhandle is starting to kick off. Mason County, the Cabell County area. Now, when all of them have that cost of living and higher housing cost, and all come along with it. Now you've got somebody that will actually work with you and vote with you for the regional pays. Do you That's the way it'll get done. It'll never get done otherwise. Do you worry that with all the changes in leadership, that momentum's going to get lost? Uh, yes, but I don't want to go any further than that. Uh, the, look, that's that's a tough. I feel like that um, there is um, there's a potential for some disarray, and uh, that disappoints me because of the fact that we've done such a good job over the last ten years. And you know, the first two two years, it was just getting acclimated to being in the majority. Uh, then we picked off the low hanging fruit on the things that we needed to be done during. Of over the next four, and then this last four, it's not low hanging fruit. It, there have been difficult decisions to make, and we've been making them, and we've been making them well. And you can see the tax reductions since 2012. This is a good line on this one. Since 2012, overall taxes in the state of West Virginia has been re reduced $1.5 billion. Now, that is when you've had a budget of right around $3.2 billion all the way up to $5 billion. You know, got to go from 2012 up. And uh, that's significant, as well as investing in ourselves and our rainy day funds and our pensions. All these things, it's really, really kicking in. And uh, what I worry about right now is creating a point in time that we'll look back to and we see we failed the people of West Virginia. I worry about that. But in four months, that's not going to be my problem to worry about. Speaking of which, we had on the program Brianna Heaney from West Virginia Public Broadcasting who wrote an article which looked at the influence of out-of-state PAC money on your election defeat. This is the first time I've had an opportunity to ask you to comment on this publicly. I don't know if you want to or not, but I'm going to give you an opportunity now if you'd like to. Uh, look, uh, you know, it's 
sound like sour grapes if I comment too much. Uh, it's not sour grapes. Uh, we, we're going to have to be aware that elections, uh, the dynamic is really, really changing uh, out here in the world. Uh, the truth no longer matters on anything. And uh, so I'll comment a little bit more of that. This has to do with the pharmaceutical industry, of specifically 340B legislation that we passed in West Virginia. And what it did, that legislation was made to make or, or ran out to make sure that the, the, when it comes to prescription drugs, that those funding mechanisms stayed to where it helped our poor and our working poor and to take care of that. And they were saying that, it, you know, that it was free health care to illegal immigrants. That's false, totally false, not even remotely true. And this legislation passed out of the Senate unanimously. I think there was three no votes in the House, but that's when you got 100 people over there, three no votes, that comes all the time. They might just be pressing the wrong button. Then the governor signed, the, the, uh, signed it into law. Here's the fun part of it. And now, this is a little story that I've been telling since of last Friday, and I was in Dallas uh, for a conference down there, and on my last day, and I'm with lieutenant governors, there was probably 18, 19 of us, and uh, there was three different groups that's coming in to speak to us, and the first group to come in happened to be 340B, pro 340B and, and from the pharmaceuticals. And he started with the same rhetoric, telling these lieutenant governors this. And I sat there and listened to it, and a couple of people asked questions when he was finished. And then I started in an oink. And uh, it didn't go well for him, for that matter. And uh, then I stopped talking to him and started talking to the lieutenant governors about it. And it was really nice because a couple of them I could hear saying, Blair's right. Craig Blair's right. And then I got an applause when it was over and done with. Funny part about it was is the next group to come in to speak were 340B also. They lasted about five minutes and left because they knew what happened in the previous meeting. The misinformation that is out here and the disinformation that's out here is borderline criminal. So... We're still doing the right things for the people of West Virginia, and we did do the right thing, and I would not change a single vote. But the lies that they put out there, uh, it's sad, and it's all in the name of profits. The group that was behind it said effectively, as I understand it, it was they just simply selected you randomly and then trying to prove a point and make a name for themselves, poured as much money as they could into your election defeat, and claim that you went from being, uh, I think, plus five points to down five points. More than that, okay. I think, uh, plus twelve no, points and down. Wrong number. 18, twelve 19. points. Twelve yeah. points. Okay, in in the in the two weeks that it ran, and they claim uh, credit for the victory and said, "Put, you know, we're putting people on notice uh, of what we can do if uh, you vote the way these people." Uh, that are voting, and we, you know, we, we disagree with. Uh, Tom Willis was offended by that, saying that he had more to do with his victory than this group had to do with uh, your defeat. Do you feel this group primarily caused your defeat? I know that they did, uh, and so, so one of the things that this group did is a thing called a push poll, and the push poll is is the, it's sort of like you beat your wife thing, uh, but they go to the uh, if you knew that uh, Craig Blair voted for uh, to allow illegal immigrants to get free health care, uh, would you vote for Craig Blair or Tom Willis? And But they'd set the stage for that. And that group, by Stand By Us, actually said that each time they polled, my numbers dropped down. And and I knew what my numbers were as well. The, the, that 12%, 12%, I knew those numbers. And they would drop down each time they did these polls, not to mention the fact that they weren't reporting what they were spending. And there was borderline coordination. This is the Stand so, For Us PAC, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Right. Craig, let me, let me shift gears if I can. Uh, 
this January, you'll be stepping down after about 20 years of, uh, of service uh, in the legislature, both as a delegate and a senator. Uh, during that time, you saw success with tort reform, PEIA. Uh, the rainy day fund was practically non-existent, uh, and now it's a very, uh, very healthy. Uh, you have a lot of things you can take credit, uh, take credit or be proud of. Is there a single thing or one or two things that you have regret as you're leaving office that you're not able to do? No, nah, I, don't, I don't look to the world with regret. Uh, so, no. I, there's, there's many things that still need to be done in the state of West Virginia, and I can rattle through all those. Uh, but for regret, no. No. Uh, I don't see it that way. You know, when one door closes, another one opens. And so there's all kinds of opportunities to be able to still make the world better that we live in. You know, uh, but since I, I thought I was coming on this show to give a, a, the report on finances. <laughs> just so, yes, you know, which you got five uh, minutes to get to, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, but I seen something the other day. And a guy was uh, washing his hands, and when he got done, he took the paper towels that he was drying his hands off with and cleaned up around the sink before he left. And it really, really, really struck me. I'd never done that. I'd, you know, I'd do it at home or whatever, but no matter where you're at, you ought to leave the world a little better than what you found it. And that's exactly what was taking place there. I'd like to think that that's what I've done politically as well as in business that uh, I tried to make the world a little better for everything I tried to do. So let's get to the state's numbers in August, Craig, uh, short of projections, not by much, but still short. Yes. Uh, for the uh, month, we were under revenue estimates by about $5 million. And um, that's that's not too big a deal for when you look at it collectively. I'm starting to s worry about maybe a trend, but it's still too soon for that. Uh, but personal income tax collections was down about four million dollars. Uh, severance tax was down thirteen, almost fourteen million dollars. Consumer sales tax collections was up of two million. So. I think that that we're starting to flatten out a little bit in the state of West Virginia. Uh, that you know, I'm giving this report, and it's not much longer. Uh, we think that the month of September is going to improve, and it's normally a pretty good month. Our rainy day fund's got 1.2 billion dollars in it. Also, we've got another 450 million dollars set into the side in the personal income tax reserve fund. Also. So we're not short in dollars, but we also have a good many liabilities that's lying out in front of us that we're going to need to address. So. When I had Eric a Householder on last week, Craig, he talked about a timing issue with some reports and money as well that really negated the $5 million deficit there or, or shortfall on the projections. Do you agree with that? Uh, it could be. Of uh, you know we had some of that in our July report also, uh, but when you go back and look at the previous year, um, I, I'm starting to see just a little bit of a softening in the economy. Mm -hmm. So you got to have an awareness of this and keep your controlling and your spending. And where you actually, the, how I know this is is credit card sales. When you see people increasing the usage of credit cards, then it tells you that it's going on, that the economy's starting to soften because what they're doing is borrowing that money uh, rather than paying for it in cash. John, you should like that point. You've been talking about that for a long time. Yep. Yeah. So, Craig, uh, go ahead. Hey, yeah, and there's one other point. Strip clubs, too, will give you an indicator. Uh, on it. I know that I, you think I'm saying that's funny, uh, but in reality, uh, there's something out there that tells you that strip clubs, the amount of money that f throws through their coffers, uh, that when the economy's good, there's more money that goes through that. 
and you can look it up on the internet. It, it's actually some sort of a economic forecast that they use with those things. I heard the same thing about men's underwear sales. No lie. Really? When men's underwear, because men, <laughs> the last thing men buy is underwear, and when when everything Once else every is purchased, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> when men buy underwear, the economy is good because everything else has been addressed. <laughs> oh my God! I just had a terrible sight in my mind. <laughs> you and me, you're talking about Stubblefield, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've been nice today, Craig. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, very very nice. Uh, in regards to the personal income tax cut, the, the trigger has been met, so there will be a 4%. But does if, if, if we trigger another 4% tax cut, does that create concerns for next year's numbers, Greg? Uh, if the, on the trigger one, no. I'm, I'm not too concerned about that because it will only do what we're capable of doing. And a 4% cut is $88 million in our revenue growth for a year exceeds $150 million. So you can have that growth that comes along with it, you're right. And there's still plenty of room to be able to squeeze out more efficiencies in our government, okay? There are plenty of those opportunities there. Uh, we've been taking, you know, one step at a time on being able to get there, and it's working. And that's one thing that I hope into the future, the future legislatures of the that they continue that same path on being able to manage it. I get worried about it sometimes when they want to overspend. And if you cut taxes too much, that's just exactly like overspending. Uh, but we've done a tremendous job of being able to manage that while continuing your growth, uh, the economic growth, that revenue growth. Does this pretty much put a stop to the conversation about the governor's request for an additional 5% income tax cut? Well, I've said all along that if they want to spend uh, that next 5% in $110 million, then we're going to have to take some future liabilities off the table. Uh, and when I say that, that, there are things that we can do statutorily and management-wise uh, that could eliminate a billion dollars in uh, future liabilities. I'm okay uh, with doing that. But if they're not capable of, if, if the votes are not in the legislature to be able to do that, then I say, no, you, you are, you're going to create a point in time where we fail the people of West Virginia, and I, you won't do that with my vote. Craig, thanks for your time this morning. We always appreciate it. Yep, it's a pleasure. Hey, Bill, thank you for the advertisement. Uh, well, it's well-deserved, Craig. <laughs> thank you. Gentlemen, enjoy your day. Have a good day. Take care. Thank you. Senate President Craig Blair.